Lots going on in October. I am super excited because it is beautiful here in Southern Oregon. It's cooling down. So you can probably hear it in my voice. I'm pretty stoked. Anyway, you are here for some education. And today we have the dynamic duo, Roger Molina and Ellen Devine. Ellen is driven to teach and had been in the trade show circuit and teaching class, classes and workshops around the nation. She has an incredible style of haircutting that is traditional, but with a twist. And Roger has 20 years of experience behind the chair. He's one of the most requested stage artists in the U.S. He was a lead facilitator Redkins um, at the Redkin Academy for over a decade and now is a freelance educator. And he's very visual, detailed, and simple. Um, we love having these two together because they have this beautiful contrast and flow with each other. So please, in the chats, let's welcome Roger Molina and Ellen Devine. Hello. What's up? How's everybody doing? Good morning. So okay. happy to have you all. I'm going to get off Perfect. screen because I know you have lots of education, but I'll pop back in with questions. Good to see you. Yeah. Well, thanks so much, everybody, for joining us. We are here in a also a sunny place in St. Louis, Missouri, and we are very excited to be with you guys today. We're going to talk just shop let's say <laughs> yeah we're gonna be getting into different types of reshaping so we're gonna be doing some short hair cutting um but you know it's called reshape because we're really talking about maybe it's reshaping a shortcut that a guest already has or if you think about when someone with long hair cuts their hair off it's reshaping their reality as well so we're gonna get a little bit into that and do we want to show our video before? Yeah, and let me give you just one second about what it's about. It's a short little 30 second video. And it's, I wanted to share it with you. It's sort of a personal moment of mine. Um, you go outside and you're like, today I'm going to go outside. It's a beautiful day. I'm going to go play what I was thinking the other day. And then it started raining. <laughs> so I was just like forced into just watching the rain. And I wanted to show you guys how beautiful it actually became. So it's a phone video, but we try to make it, or made it as big and beautiful as possible. If we can play that video, that would be wonderful. Eh? <laughs> so I was you, taking a deep breath there at I the know, sound of the rain. <laughs> it was kind of nice. See, what, what actually happened was that I was forced to change my attention from what I was doing into what was happening. And I think that was the key. Um, at that point in time, I started to see how beautiful actually just the rain itself was hitting stuff. So it took all of our plants and I put them out in the rain. And we all just took a second and let the rain kind of fall on us. And then the sun came out later <laughs> and it was really beautiful, but it gave me a chance to sort of just reshape what I thought was going to happen and then now do what's happening today. And sometimes with haircuts and with, with the work that we see behind the chair, you're not just reshaping their haircut, especially now more than ever. I think as a hairdresser, you guys that are working behind the chair through the last year or two, you recognize that you're reshaping a lot of stuff each time that you see them. Okay. Eh? So we are going to spend some time with that today and that's going to mean mostly haircutting and stuff, but there'll be some other stuff. And so we're really grateful that you guys are here and we're grateful that you spent some time with us this morning. If you're just joining us now, good morning. And you got to rewind and watch the rest as <laughs> you get started. Yeah. But we'll just go in, I guess, to get some hair done. Yeah. Yeah. So if we're talking about reshaping, um, I see they said, I love the reshaping of reality. I mean, we're all going through that. Um, I'm going to just show you an example of some pictures. Um, and so here's a, basically what clients do sometimes, right? They'll bring their phone in. They're going to show you a bunch of pictures that they like, and it's never just one picture. So give some hearts in the chat if you've had that happen to you. Someone wants a new haircut. They want to reshape their hair completely. And instead of one haircut, they show you about five. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to show you some inspiration. So we have our first one, short, little tousled, longer, and go the right way. Oh, and they say, I like the disconnection here, and I like the top on this one. And then I like the bangs on this one and I like the texture on this one. And you're thinking, how do I piece all of these haircuts together? 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to show you just how to break down hair. She's in a bob right now. And we're going to cut this into a short haircut. So I just want to show my sectioning off as we do it. I always say bite sized pieces. So we can see that there's a curved section separating the back and the sides. And then just really simply on the top, I cut out or I left this front part out because we're going to do a little bit of like a baby bang just to open the face up, keep it edgy. So I think it's a fun way to make a haircut edgy and it's not too emo, even though that's kind of back. And I rocked that for a very long time in my life. <laughs> and then just separating the top from the back or the crown area up there. So super simple sectioning. I'm going to start by cutting just a couple sections in the back while Roger starts off and then I'll catch you up where I'm going to. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, buddy. So here is sort of the pro quo of the section that I'm going to work with. Uh, I have an existing kind of bob as well, but it's the sort of bob that well, hit that for you. It's that sort of bob that has the lean, right? That leans back just slightly. It's not the flat one. So I'm going to sort of work with that idea and keep that going, but it would be more of like a reshape of something that's on that level. I'm going to do inside out, meaning I'm going to cut at the like parietal ridge and work down and then do that basically all the way around. If it have ending in a shape that's kind of close to this. Now this is on a coal head. So the shape of the face and the jaw seems way more structured. Then you may see on the LE shape, and it's really just the anatomy of the client, all right? So if I'm wanting to maintain some of the strength that happens on the coal shape, there's things that you can do. And if I'm wanting to break it up and achieve some of the looseness or the softness that you get on the LE shape, then there's certain things that you do. So um, this scissor, the 14 tooth one, be the first one I focus on. I have about three that I'm going to show. Um, and using different scissors to basically achieve different things in different parts. I'm going to start in the nape area. And the idea is to get something that's sort of like tight in so it can't flip out at the bottom, but I also want it to feel mullety. So what I'm going to do is just going to slide these clips out of the way. I'm going to separate left from right in the center back. And I've done that right above it. So it's pretty simple to get now and just separate left from right and get all of the hair from the left side in my hand. All I'm really wanting to do is remove some of this length at this top. And it's almost essentially just layering the nape, if you will, if you think about each one in a little section. If you reshape, it's easy to break down areas and reshape those first. I'm gonna camp there. I wanna get my hand up so you can see this. Camping in one spot, literally just a straight line with this 14 tooth. So my hand stays square along the back. If you were looking at it from the side profile, it's horizontal, it's flat, right? The top of the section is flat. So I'm building a square within a round, holding it strong with my hands. But when it gets cut with the 14 tooth, because when it's closing down, it's hitting pretty wide tooth, right? And it's cutting a lot of hair. It ends up cutting a blunt-ish line. But the result in the end game is that there is a little bit of texture. There is a little bit of point cut along the line. And it's the type that keeps weight. Not all Roger. points cut are designed to lose the weight. We want to keep it here. Yes, sir. I, I was just, and you were probably just about to say it, but I was going to ask what, because I'm sure one of the questions that's popping up in people's head is, why would I choose to do this with that that particular shear versus just go ahead and just do like a traditional point cut? Well, I don't know about you guys, but when I get into my, thank you, Andrew, when I get into a shorter length of hair here, when I come in with a traditional point cut blade, I often get myself. I've I hit a point in my career where I'm just, I'm, I still do it. Don't get me wrong. I cut myself all the dang time, but. I don't want to do it anymore. You know, I'm just sick of doing it. That's my reshape. I hate cutting myself. I don't want to do it anymore. So <laughs> I'm going to come in with something like this that I can cut more black. Like, you know, there's no chance of getting me because I'm cutting so blunt and I could just rest the whole blade on my bottom finger. So I'm not, or even rest it on my third finger. 
I'm not point cutting in and getting so close that I can almost taste it, right? I can just avoid it. Just going to uh, direct straight up horizontal, get a point cut line. Let me, I know if I turn it this way, it's going to get the most visual result of the blade. But no matter what, I got the back of my hand. Blessed child. So I'm getting the whole entire nape in one touch. And then it compacts in there tight. But if you notice, I still got a little bit of the, you know, the Tennessee sidekick, the Orlando Bloom, what do you call it? Get it. Um, now I'm going to say the Tennessee <laughs> sidekick. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm going to hit it with, now I'm going to come back with the blade. Now, formerly I thought, don't do this. But now I'm like, yeah, dude, do this because I understand the blade a little bit better. Now, recognize that I want to cut almost all of this off because it's going to. I like that it has a little bit more of a tight edge here. And then on this side, it ends up with more like that's from a previous haircut, but we have those. And then I'm going to come and flip over and cut from the outside in. Or I guess this would be the inside out as well, isn't it? even coming from over the top surface and notice it's like almost getting rid of the hair immediately. A bunch of it leaves. It's not like the Invisiblend that leaves a little and gets a soft result or even the reversible that takes away a lot of hair, but this one takes away chunks at a time. What I mean is if you have curly hair, this would be the last thing I say, Al, if you have curly hair, it's better if they stay together, right? So if I can take away pieces in bunches, then the other hair must be left in bunches and then they will stay together, stay coiled, stay friends because frizzy ends need them. All right. So I'm discovering that I actually like this scissor and this mentality more than any other for my curly hair. And I'm going to do basically the exact same thing to the horizontal sides. Everything from here will be brought up and done to the same thing. Oop, and then I'll bring it down and pencil some stuff in in a little bit. And Alan's going to come right back in. And I'm going to go right back up. <laughs> okay. So what? That was about four minutes. And we already cut an entire side. Let me raise this up just so you guys can see. I'm a little shorter here. So based off the pictures that we looked at, they were wanting a shortcut. But it's not, I don't want to say the word scalped, but... A nice way to repeat it basically to know it's not completely tapered up there's some shaggy bits and what i really like to focus on when i'm doing short hair is like what's my like perimeter look like is there fringiness is it soft where do i leave that and so i like to focus like right in front of the ear and in that nape area all around in the back area just to give some fringiness so three cuts is all this takes we're going to do it efficiently Roger's using that 14 tooth and I'm going to be using the reversible blending shear. So can I see those real quick? Do you have like a sec just to show if you want to hold them up? Just look at the teeth difference here. I had too much coffee. I'm shaking. <laughs> so the teeth difference here, as you can see, there's a lot more and there's less, but spaced off. So he's going to get more negative space in between where I'm going to do an actual cut and I won't have to work as many times back and forth. Right. So it's going to cut it softer, different than a blunt blade, but not as much um, pieciness to it. Yeah. Thanks. So working with that reversible blending shear, it's reversible because if you look at the tang, you can hold it from both sides right there. Okay. So working in this back and uh, nape area, I'm going to get this front section out of the way. I've already sprayed it down. Now this is a pretty wide section. So I'm just gonna go with the shape of the head here. You can see if I hold my comb flat, right where it lifts off is where that head starts to change direction. So bite-sized pieces, I'm just gonna take a vertical section and I'm gonna subdivide right where that head starts to round. Okay, take that front hair out of the way. Let's see, right where it rounds. And now I'm gonna simply comb from underneath. Now I already cut this previous section. So how did I determine my guide, Ellen? So how I determined it is when I elevate it, I kept my fingers close to the head. 
So see how they're tu they're not out, they're not up. They're literally resting against the head right at the part. So that's where I'm going to determine my guide. Now that I have a guide, I can just go to my previous section. Okay, so if that makes sense, send some love in the chat. If you have questions, please ask. My finger position, which is where I'm holding my hair, is going to stay relative to this section I just took. So I'm going to comb and elevate up. Right here is my guide inside. It's hard to see because it's a little tiny guide. My fingers are going to stay close to the head. And now I'm going to take the reversible blending shear with the blunt blade on the bottom. And I'm just going to go back and forth with it till I get all of that hair off. Now there's going to be a lot of extra length at the bottom. And that's good because that is how I'm going to get my fringy pieciness. So if you start looking at the silhouette, you're going to see you have little short pieces up top here, and then you're going to get more length at the bottom. I'm going to leave the length till I'm completely done with this section. Try and not hit this here. Okay, now here, my finger position is going to mimic my section. So now I'm just going to have my fingers, they're going to slightly angle back because my section is like a classic horseshoe shape, but it's got a roundness to it. And I'm doing that because a diagonal line, a round line is softer than just going boom, horizontal. Okay, so same thing, I'm elevating up. I'm using my fine teeth of my comb. That's just my preference right now. I'm gonna elevate up. My fingers are gonna match my part right there. Drop this comb so you guys can see. Boom, let's get close right here. So if I wanted a guide reference, which I'm going to use, right here is my guide. You can see it pointing out right there. It's a lot. If it's too much for you to hold, you can split this in half vertically. Boom, wake you up. <laughs> okay. And just go back and forth. So this is, this is the second cut. And I only got one more. No, I was thinking. Okay. <laughs> And now you can see that really beautiful silhouette. Super easy, two cuts, that's all it took right there. Okay, now before I get into that, next section, I'm gonna now take my razor. Everyone at San Via knows I love a good razor. <laughs> so now all I'm gonna do is just detail. And I'm gonna pick it up again to detail the front. But when you're detailing the back area, this nape, hold your razor like a pencil. So if you hold it like a pencil, you're able to kind of like divide and conquer what you're looking to get done here. And this is where you have a consultation with your client. You decide what do they want back there? Do they want it to be longer? I mean, mullets are in right now, so you could leave it longer if that's what they prefer. And remember, like we talk about reshaping. This is a complete reshaping. The entire haircut is changing. When someone cuts their hair off, they mean business, right? Uh, Roger talks about this a lot when we talked about it last night. When when someone's cutting their hair off, think about all the crap that they're getting rid of, right? That is old hair left on there. There's a lot of energy that's held in hair in general. When someone cuts their hair off, they're releasing a lot. And so not only are you reshaping what's going to sit on their head, you're reshaping how they're going to feel and really how they're going to start living in life, I believe, because things change. Okay, so reshaping everything so just nice and soft right there let's do one more cut that looks good. thank you and then i'll catch up with roger we're going to go to the side section it's a super quick cut we're going to take some more smaller sections when we get to this top area okay now what i did on the opposite side is just to save save a little bit of a you know questionable situations. I don't know. Has anyone ever accidentally cut that part right there? They're trying to keep fringy. So what I do is if you don't want to cut it, just let it out. So I'm just going to take a little half moon, just a little rounded seam right there. And I'm just going to leave that out so I can detail it. I'm going to pick up my blending shears again. Same thing. Now look at my section's horizontal right there, so I'm gonna elevate horizontally. <laughs> my pants, <laughs> okay, right here. So here is my guide. 
same thing blunt blade on the bottom it's going to cut easier because the hair otherwise will fall into the teeth if i'm elevating up right now i'm going to drop this down now you've got this tendril that you can go ahead and detail okay so i'm going to detail this roger's about to slide back in and fill us in on where he's going next after this i'm going to jump right into the crown area and show you what's up. If you guys are feeling good, show some love in the chat. Ask questions if you got them. And don't overthink it. As you're cutting short hair, just look section by section. Good. We're going to move on. Roger sliding in now. Yeah, buddy. Okay, so here's what we said we were going to do. If you're just jumping on, here's what... I said I was going to do before was this shape. This is the one I was leaning towards, right? And then as I started cutting it on, this is Ellie, Lydia. Mm, don't ever Same call her by the wrong name, Lydia. <laughs> uh, I started. I was like, I don't want to cut it that short. It doesn't look right, right? It doesn't look right on that shape, on that structure, on that thing. And that's the key. Don't try to force a round peg into a square hole. Sometimes it's important to just do what's happening, right? And so instead of going in really tight and taking it all the way off, I decided I'm going to leave some of those fringiness. I'm going to like the soft pieces. I'm going to want them. Maybe it's because Ellen was talking about them. Maybe it's because I don't know why. But for whatever reason happens, I decided to switch up the game and leave this more airy, more loose. And I still want to get the structure of the line. So I'm going to work still with strong lines. I'm just going to take now because this stuff has already been shortened coming from the nape area. I'm going to take some of that and I'm going to just slice diagonal the top corner of this square off. Because if you ever need to break down a square, you just go corner by corner, see which ones you need and which ones you don't need. So as I work away from here, I'm going to take some of the nape area length and I'm also going to look down and ma match like like lines make things emphasize, right? So if I really love the jawline or the slope or the angle that's building on, on the face, I will just mimic it and follow it. And then I would look at it and see if I extend my fingers, does it make her look better? Or if I more even out and lean out my fingers, does it make her look better? What looks better on her? Look down from the perspective down. So if I lean her back. I, if I leaned her back and looking at this jawline from here, you know, underneath and comparing those lines, I know that that's where I'm going to start, but my finger angle gets cheated or moved in what looks the best. On Lydia, she has the perfect structure, the perfect shape, so I'm going to emphasize it. You always emphasize what's beautiful by making the lines match, right? So if I take this corner off, and I only say corner because right now I have a square. So if I take off the top bit, it's the corner. Then I'm going to cut a straight, strong line there. And the tighter I stay on one line, the less point cut effect I get. Okay. But if I take now a little bit bigger bite, I would dig in about an inch to this. So I go in about three quarters, maybe an inch if that's what you want. But I get clumps that get removed. Let me show you that line again. Right now I have the little pieces, individual pieces that have become, but they stay all together. And that's important. This affects the way this result comes out. So if I take another section, I'm working now away from that comb. I'll be right back. Right. I'm working away from the comb. So I get, or I'm working away from the same place. So I can see as I'm coming up, how much hair needs to be removed. And I don't want to keep going forever because I want to see with some of those tendrils down there. Maybe I do. Depends on the girl. Depends on the boy. It depends on the time. But as I'm working away from you now, you can see, maybe you can't. Let's go over there. The hair is just kind of staying up in the position that I cut it, which is straight out. So elevation is horizontal. My section is diagonal. 
and I'm working from the interior down to the exterior. So meaning starting from the parietal ridge and working my way out to the link. And as I remove on a straight strong line, I get a point headed result because of the cis. And for thick, thick hair, I would just keep going all the way through the perimeter. For fine hair, you may want to start paying attention here. But literally just drag it up, drag it back, cut it off. So I'm building a straight, strong shape, but I'm doing it in bigger sections because I can get away with it with the tool. And it ends up collapsing down, reshaped. <laughs> But see, the big pieces that get left become texture that I can now kind of manage away. It would be better if I came here. I want to cut from the back to the front so that natural happens, right? If I'm in the front, and this is kind of silly, but if I'm in the front cutting back, the hair will by nature just push away from it, right? Like, because I'm cutting, 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 so it's going to push, push, push. So by nature, if I want it to drift this way, it's more natural for me to be here and just push forward, especially with this big blade. Every time this big blade cuts, it gets rid of a, a little village in a good way, right? Sometimes I just, I know that I have a whole village and I need to remove it all quickly. And originally I thought, this is a risky one because it really breaks it up in there. Yeah, totally. Now that I know the scissor well, I'm saying slide cutting with it is sick. But recognize that if you want to get back to like a structured, strong, clean line, it's not going to do it very well in this lifetime, not without a new haircut. It's going to get wiggly if you cut it in this way. Moving it around the perimeter, I get the stronger result because it's laying right on top of where it lives. Here, I was elevating up before I cut. So it's going to get a loose result or looser, right? Down here on the ground, I'm cutting it off at zero, and whatever I see here stays here forever. So don't let that intimidate you. Let that make you be bold to get the pieces that are bold that you want, because this is the client that's looking for something fresh, like different, doesn't want to do the same old thing, and she's feeling a little bit pushy. So pushy that I can get right up against the face and do the same thing. And I'll be ready to move on to the next section. So I'll go in the back and get my next two regions, which I'm going to work up now into the crown. And there's this area in between the crown and the top, right? And so I got the nape, what would be, I would call it the top. And then it's this area that's sort of encompassing the crown, but it's going out wide. It's going way out over here. And I'm going to take those bits and I'm going to direct them back. So as Elle gets herself prepared for you, I take those bits and I'm going to direct them back and grab the underneath as my guide length. So obviously I'm not going to connect these two. I'm going to see how long this is. Okay. I need to make sure that all these bits make it above that length. So what I mean is if you put them together, you can see how short that underneath is. Right? I separated these on purpose. I want to disconnect them from each other. So I'm not going to pay attention to the bottom. I'm going to pay attention to the top. The top drops down and sits where? And then you pick that length. I'm going to cut it off there. Boop. And then that becomes my guide. So I take that piece back up and use it as my guide. Create a new guideline for this length. And I'll show you the last one before I go. Alan's coming back in. All right. Okay. So now we have, you can tell I'm short when I'm off camera, I lower her. <laughs> um, no, we're good. So already completed this side. I'll step my black shirt out of the way so you can see a couple things that I want you to look at. Not this long hair. We'll just cut that off. It's fine. So when this client wears this short hair, um, this is just a personal preference of mine. So I like to take the short hair in the back, like where the crown would be, or I should say maybe like a whirl. A lot of people have a natural fall of where the hair wants to lay. So 
I know that this hair that is in the crown area when I cut will spill forward a little bit. So this is going to go based off of their natural fall. And so when you're looking at this, I cut this side to the planes of the head. So when we're looking at the planes of the head, what they are, they're small flat spots all over the head. Before I took that comb and I found where that big change of direction was on the head shape. Well, now I'm cutting vertically. So vertically is going to slim it a little bit. It's also going to, when I cut planes, mimic that head shape. The head shape is round. So I'm going to get a nice round crown. So I'm going to show you with my comb. When I hold the comb, I'll stand in front of it so you can see. You can see that it lifts off in the front and back. If you see that, show some love in the chat. Give some hearts, a thumbs up, whatever you want. You can see that there's a small flat spot. Same thing if I go down a little bit. Same thing if I go down a little bit. So that comb finds all these little small flat spots. When I cut mimicking that, it is going to mimic that head shape. So here's how I determined my guide. I took a vertical seam right down the middle and I start it bottom to top. That's just to start my guide. After that, I'm going to just doop, doop, cut those off. So I'm starting bottom to top because I'm giving a subtle disconnection from this underneath to the top. Anytime that we disconnect hair, I'm showing you how I'm measuring where that comb lifts off. I'm going to section. Um, anytime we disconnect hair, you're going to get a little bit of movement that happens. The hair is going to dance a little bit more. You know, think about a blended tapered cut. It's going to sit a lot different than if it's disconnected. So I'm going to elevate straight out. My guide is going to flip back. You can see right here is my guide. Okay, so I determine my guide saying, hmm, where would this sit if I cut it right here? It'd sit right about that occipital bone. That sounds good. So you can choose wherever that seems best. I'll tell you what, if I'm going pretty tapered and short underneath, then I'm going to definitely be able to take this a little bit longer. Also, if I'm going to taper it or, you know, some clients I shave the entire underneath and it's really disconnected, at that point, the hair up top is going to be a little bit more dramatic. And so it's just going to show a little differently. Just like if you were here at the start of this, I showed a picture, it was pink, it was shaved underneath, right? So just know the shorter you go underneath, it's gonna be a little bit more dramatic. What's cool about disconnecting this is it's gonna look disconnected, but, or sorry, it's gonna look blended, but it's actually disconnected, but it's allowing the hair to move more. And that's the whole point of it. So I'm gonna stand to the side so you can see. My elevation will change based off of where I'm at in that plane. So right here I am, I'm going directly up from where that flat spot is. Whoop. My fingers are parallel to that section. I'm elevating it 90 degrees straight up and I'm point cutting, a hot tip when point cutting. This is just what I do. Rather than go in like this vertically, I'm more prone to cut myself. I like to kind of go in diagonally and kind of chomp at it. <laughs> so I go lower to my fingers and then I'll raise it up and hit a different point. Kind of doing it so you guys can see and I can't see, so I should get closer. So down and then I'll move up, right? And that's just because I don't want a perfect line. I want to give a little bit of teeth looking, like as if I use those 14 tooth um, cutting shears actually. Sure. So now I'm going to take, I'm good. Now I'm going to take a vertical section. Okay, just to catch you up on this side, I'll give you this view. Vertical subsection, just radially going across. Here I am. I'm going to go to the top now. Boom. Right where I find those flat spots, it's going to be almost like a peace sign. You can find that. I'm going to subsection, and I'm going to push that guide from my previous section over and elevate straight up from where it is. So here's the all I'm cutting. Point cut. You can cut this blunt. You can cut this with blending shears whatever feels right. Okay. If you need to measure again, there it is. Right there's my flat spot. And like I said, this is when you cut to the planes of the head. It's going to mimic that head shape. And I'm going to do this to the entire back area in what I'm going to call like radial sections. So if you think of like a sundial, it's just going to spin around like that come down. In this back area on my Lydia mannequin, I get about, I'd say four sections. 
what you'll notice is, let's go this way so you guys can see. What you'll notice is with every client, it's going to be different. So you might have more sections if they have thick hair. You might have less. Just depends. Once I'm done with this, I'll catch you up. I'll finish it off camera. But you'll notice that it's just long enough here to just sit over that shortest part of my disconnection. So you want to make sure that you're passing that shortest point. And then I'm just going to pick up my Invisiblends and I'll go in vertically and just give a little bit more movement and texture to the ends. Right. So same thing. I'll just follow my planes down, give a little bit of texture. And I'm going to do this to the entire back area. And then once we get to the front, I'll catch you up with what we're doing there. If I can get a blow dry in, I'm going to do that as well. So I'm going to continue these last two sections doing the same principle cutting to the planes of the head while point cutting. And Roger's going to slide on in and catch you up. Yeah. So Lydia's coming back in. I have now a good, like, lean, what I would call reshaped. But there's still a lot of, like, little bits around the bottom, little soft pieces around, the like, the perimeter, I would call it, that I like. So I'm going to leave those till it's dry. I have... What I just cut off was basically this section. And I wanted to leave a lot of like loose kind of crown play. It sounds like a weird word, but like it's short enough to kind of almost create chaos. It's not round to make it bound all the way down in this length. I kind of want it to be short and tight in here. So instead of having short and tight around the perimeter, I'm going to kind of keep it sort of condensed around the internal weight like I've been working. So I'm going to do this with a different scissor. Uh, now I'm going to go to the artist series. This is my main, can I call it main man? Um, and I am going to take that whole section and hold it all up all at once. I'm going to turn it to get the best possible view of the elevation because that's the key. So in the weight o meter, right, if I go down low in the old school way of thinking, um, and I say old school meaning because it's the way that I was taught. My old school way of thinking was that if you come down low with something, it builds up weight. Yeah. And once you get high enough, it starts to lose weight. And I want with this hair to lose weight um, in volume, but I want it to like get close and tight and keep the shape in a sense. So I'm going to point cut, but on a straight strong line, take a bit of this previous guide, which I don't know if you can see that bit, but it's right at the tip of my finger. I'm going to try to get like around the tripod nation. How close is that? So close. Horizontal with the strength, right? So this one's going to stay horizontal at the top again. That's how I maintain the strength here. And I'm going to point cut. Now, because I'm going to point cut, I want to have something to rest and save myself on. I still hear his wonderful words. The out, not ouch. I don't know if you know who that is, Mr. Mm -hmm. Robert. Robert Crow means he's, I still hear his voice in my head when I go to point cut here. So I'm going to rest my blade on the ring finger. I'm going to go up, tap onto my finger. And then as I go out from there, I close it. It's easier for me to regulate which lengths I leave and which lengths I take here. So I like to have sort of a perforation that takes a zigzag pattern as it comes out. Um, and there's something about a scissor being able to just pick and choose these points because they're so long here. I want these like lengths to sort of flick and sort of get unruly, but tight, right? So you see automatically I get like little wiggles and disconnections like I was just talking about. You get, oh yeah. You get a disconnection from a, uh, another section, and they start to sort of flick and flip and m misbehave in a way that you can manipulate, right? Like you could see that if I push and pull and move around the hair, it does stuff sometimes where you're like, what? That doesn't really make any sense there. But the truth is, that's what creates the, the beginning of the party underneath the the round of the head right you want to keep that very mostly structured material under here 
any like thing that kind of gets two out of realms as far as length difference is going to create a really big disruption. I save that for up here. So the, the up here disruption is really where I can play and get more twisted, if you will, than any other part. And let me just drag this mannequin down slightly there. And you'll see that I'm going to begin right in the center. So I'm going to go what I used to be called a profile section. And basically reveal all the hair. So I have a straight line that goes from front to back or back to front, depending on which way you swing it. And it has a thin layer of hair going right up the middle. And I'm going to take the, the length that I have just cut, which is there. And I'm going to do a little twisty root to this top. This is the chaos that I was talking about. And love it or hate it my whole life i've been influenced by this type of cutting where i twist it and move it and stuff and i do it over and over again because it works like if i take and twist a piece of section like this okay and i do almost the exact same thing let's see if i can get the hair to where you can see how it comes out of there it comes out of there in some sort of chaos going this way and that so i take out big bites just boop 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 here and there and that one section will sort of have a chaos mentality. It's not gonna reside in any particular fashion. So I need to make sure that I, when I come up and initially cut, now take it vertically. When I come up and initially cut it, I got sections that match and some that don't. So that when I twist it, I'm gonna end up with more and more of that funny mentality in there where they kind of like do this and that and the idea is to have this mode of play how it's just sort of disconnected and funny and one day it does something and the next day it does something else you keep all the structure underneath so that you don't have to worry so much about it like looking out of sorts under there you want it to be very much structured underneath so that when you get toward the top you can get unstructured and this is something that just repeats over and over i'm going to go with a with that starting profile section i'm going to work my way out to the right and then i come back to center i'm going to work my way out to the left the only thing that will change is depending on the length i want to achieve and when you're doing it at home which you can or at you know in the salon you can over direct to the middle to maintain the length, or if you want it to get shorter and shorter, you just go vertical straight out from where they live. So if it was coming from where it is here, I, this section is coming straight up to center to maintain the length, right? Where if I want it to get shorter, I take the sections toward the outside corner straight up from where they live. So I am not really explaining this very well as I see it in the mirror. Let's do it with the comb. If I over direct everything to center, all the hair drags up to center, it will maintain the length out here. If I move with it and go boop, 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 right? The more I lean out, the more I'm going to cut off. So if I want to maintain the length, I direct it up even all the way to maintain the length. But essentially, the move is that you bring it up cut it off, point cut style. And then I'm actually gonna twist that like Sammy does. And the back becomes the front. So now the back is where I wanna remove the length. So it's actually in the front of my hand here. And I'm matching it up to the guideline that was just from behind it. So it really gets a chaotic sort of motion to this one section. You'll see it just with one section everything sort of flips and flams and goes every which way. So it's kind of got this somewhere between the E and the F and the G boy. And I'm going to keep working on this top thing and went out to the right. And I'm going to come back and go to the left. Elle's going to come in and show you what she's got going. And I'll be back. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Ellen Devine. Ah! <laughs> Let me grab my other scissor over here. 
Okay, so we got about, what, 12 minutes left. So I'm going to buzz this out. So I just want to catch you up on what I've done. Now I braided this little big baby bang in the front. Mostly so you guys could start seeing. I had a clip in it. Now remember, this is our little half moon section. That's going to be just to open up that fringe area right there. Okay, so I have this back. I did a really, really quick blow dry and tried to hit it with that sleeker iron just to get a little bit of shape to it. Now in the back, if you guys can recall, we did vertical planes, right? So she's not totally smoothed out yet. Just a quick rough dry, but you can already see that that shape is nice and round. It's sitting in place. The silhouette looks beautiful, but it doesn't look too tapered or scalped, I guess. Okay, so now we're gonna take our planes and go horizontally with it. Already did it on this side. I have not detail worked it at all yet. We're just doing all of our elevation first. Okay, so when we lift up this hair in the front, just like how I went vertical to find where the head changes directions, you can see it here too. Boom, right where that comb lifts off, that's where that head changes direction. I'm gonna take a section right there and I already have my other section done for me. So there's only two subsections in this top part and it's right where that head changes direction where the comb lifts off, that is where the flat spot of the head is. So now I'm gonna take this first side, Let's see if we can get this angle, okay. Actually, let's go this way. Let me dance with my tripod here. So I'm going to take this entire section. I'm going to elevate it back to the top highest point of the head. Over here, we're on the side, but that is our point of reference where we're elevating. So I've dragged it all back. I over-directed it back, meaning there's going to be length in the front. Here's my guide. It comes directly from that crown area. Now I'm going to just slide out and point cut to that. So my finger position is parallel. It's horizontal to that section. I'm cutting planes horizontally right now. So I'm going to cut the length. Now, while I have my hands like that, I'm going to take my reversible blending shears and just start to soften. I have not done this to the opposite side yet, but we want to just start getting that length. So awesome that it already goes short to long in one cut. Move to the next section, same thing. I'm gonna elevate and look, I could even cut it with my blending shears again. I was using the streamline right here, the streamline scissors. I like it for point cutting a lot. Cuts good on dry and wet. Cut that off, pick up my reversible blending shears again. And I'm just going to get rid of some of that weight, just like so. Okay, now when I twist, you can start seeing the length coming in front. So what's gonna happen is they can start parting their hair to the side. You can have that long bang. I'm gonna get rid of some of this weight from the horizontalness and I could detail it, work it however I want, right? Okay, we got 1050, we're close. So I'm gonna just show you how I'm gonna do this little baby bang, I'll start it. And then I will finish it off camera. And right before we finish the class, I will show you the end result. All I'm going to do is section this hair off that I've just cut that's dry. All the hair that's long, I'm going to keep it in its natural fall. Keeping it in its natural fall, I'm going to pick up my smaller streamlines. So a little bit littler because I'm working right on the face here. Elevate her up. Okay, now this I could do dry if I'm a little nervous about it, but I'm just going to take my comb and I'm just going to start cutting on the skin. I do this with clients. I just tell them, hey, I'm going to be right on your skin. Please don't move. And I'm just going to open that up. And this is going to be covered by those long bangs. So I'm point cutting my blade. My still blade is on the skin. My moving blade is on top. So I'm gonna finish this, cut it off camera, finish that up, maybe smooth it, and then I'll show you the final result when we're done. And Roger's gonna catch up with what's going on. <laughs> She's gotta get finished up, but we're doing good. We have a lot of information. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Y'all are doing great. 
We're doing great. We're getting Let's tons. Is there anything out there burning, burning desires or questions? It's been awful quiet out there, Andrew. Well, we lost half of our audience because I guess Facebook just like blew up or something because um, we lost Facebook and um, other, you know, some of the people behind the scenes are like looking at their Facebook account. They can't get anything to pull up. So no way. Facebook might have just burned down, but whatever. Oh, it's <laughs> the moment we've all been waiting for. Be careful what you wish. But anyway, okay. the, the 50 people here are super stoked. There's lots of good comments, so keep rocking. Now they're all going to be out there checking out Facebook. Dude, put it in the comments what happened, if you know what happened on Facebook. I mean, honestly, I'm dying to know. I can't wait to check it out. Okay, so I ended up with this sort of canopy of length that's coming over the front. Here's what we did. Took a vertical section at the center and took that section straight up. Boom, right? And I'm going to point cut, point cut, point cut, point cut. And then I'm going to actually take the whole section, keep it in your comb when you turn it, and then the back moves to the front. You've seen that move before, but making sure that I'm cutting just a section off the back because I want this hair, right, to, to maintain the length in the front. So as I turn this, whoop, make sure that you know which one was the back, which one is the front. What it, look, what it does, though, is creates this wonderful chaos that you can see that happens on this front spill, like the E's and the F and the J boys and girls. I think the G boy is a girl, but th this one is like more length. It falls in the front. It does a lot of this sort of chaos because it's been twisted before it gets cut. So when it comes back down, it still wants to twist a lot. And I only do it to the hair that lives above the parietal ridge. It's the stuff that by nature will fall forward because my section working when it's working straight down the middle like that. And even if I directed everything up to it, the length that it would fall out would be more disruptive, more chaotic. I kind of ended up going with this angle straight up from here. And it still spills forward because each section from the round forward, as it starts to slope downhill, it spills that way by nature. That's the way it's wanting to go. So if I have it from there going down vertically, it gets a little bit of chaos. But when I twist it, it really gets a lot of chaos going this way and that. So if you get it back down to the ground and you have pieces that you don't necessarily like, Right. If there's any pieces that you want to kind of pencil away, you can come in and point cut them away. You can detail them out with a razor, as Ellen was doing. Uh, my personal favorite, uh, and I'm not really just using a scissor because I'm like, it's the new one. I, I tend to feel that way about all my tools, that the new one's the one I like. And apparently there's a clipper coming my way. I don't know if I'm going to talk about that or not, but there's a clipper that's coming out from Sam. And I'm like, what? Dude, give me and that. And it's so good. I know. I used, I mean, we in Austin, but they are. I haven't seen her since and i'm like oh here she comes i think it's yeah, coming coming soon so take take the little bit and you're twisty and you kind of like maintain that low elevation idea that we were talking about earlier and now think about this guys it ends up like it ends up being like a little turn of a rope almost so you got to make sure you get those like ropey bits together now don't rough unruffle them you want them to just turn in one motion together so it's not that type where you twist and twist and twist and twist and twist until it's like pulled all apart. Think of it as a rope. If I was cutting a rope, I'd want all of the ropes to move together so that when I punch them, they all could kind of stick together. I leave them with friends. Don't like come and shred, shred, shred with these. You want to like slow, slow, slothy them, like slow turn, little tiny, little turns. And don't rip it apart. Just give it little taps on the end. So that pieces of the rope come apart, but other pieces stay. And then those ones will be airy and light, but still stay thick and like, right. Um, oh, that looks good, Bob. Nice. Bob is Ellen. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Ellen Devine, that looks great. You're doing wonderful. Here is my clips that are still on my shirt. That are the years, I think. And this is in review, the reshape of that in, huh? one. Yeah, Ellen's coming on in. Here she comes. Oh, <laughs> that was a nice little disco entrance. Feel free to review, Roger. I mean, I'm worried about Facebook. That's all I can think about now. Andrew Carruthers. I no realized way. I probably, like, that was the worst thing to actually bring up because <laughs> we probably distracted everybody. I mean, how that's wonderful okay. would it be to be we're live and then that's the day? Just kidding. Not wonderful. Don't you guys that. broke Facebook. That's right. That's yes, right. dude. Ellen, <laughs> all right foot. just a recap so in the front we did the planes horizontally here's that little baby fringe if you don't want to do that 
don't do it. You don't have to. You can cut it longer. You can add it into how we cut the entire front part. And if you need help to remember the top, remember it's just finding the small changes of direction horizontally in the front and vertically in the back. You could shave the underneath, get a really different variation. But you know what? I was talking about the emo swoop coming back. Mm -hmm. It's a real thing. I rocked yeah. that for how long? I think my part was like literally over here for like half of my life. <laughs> and uh, yeah, couldn't see one eyeball. I was like, I'm mysterious. I mean, I'm going to go with that. It. It's not dead. Okay. Emo, no, it's not dead. emo is not dead. <laughs> it's not dead in haircuts. It's not dead in people. That's for sure. I think we've arrived at like a, the emo is part of the 20s. Yeah. For sure. And what I'd like to say to you guys before we go, because it's time, it's a, um, to make sure that what you take in is something you want to take in. Mm -hmm. um, when you take time, like the other day, we shared that, that clip with you in the beginning with the rain. If you take the time to look at something, make it something, be something worth it. You know, when you focus on something for a long period of time, the, it becomes a part of the way you think. And so just have a look at what you look at, you yeah. know, and do something that, that looks and refreshes a part of your soul that feels good. Yeah. Stay there. Don't don't look at all the other stuff. Yeah. And I mean, listen, to touch on everything this year, it's been a crazy year. A lot has changed. Be re or be mindful, I should say, to take care of yourselves out there. We focus a lot on clients and um, I can testament to that. I have burned my end dry some nights and some days and remember to take time for yourself. Education is a great outlet to kind of burn the steam throughout the week. Um, we do it every week. We're here for you. You connect with us on Instagram, anywhere. Um, just remember to take some time, take a deep breath, go outside, watch the rainfall, and just stay present and stay true to who you are. I vow for my my own Instagrams and ticks and things, mm -hmm. which is mostly Roger Molina hair. It's just going to be from now on stuff that like feeds people. And I'm going to stay there for a little bit. So. Whoops, let's hit the wrong button. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that was a mic drop and a half anyway. It's just poof. it was. It was kind of the, the perfect ending point, and I totally messed it up. But thank <laughs> you guys because yeah, great way to end and so uh, perfectly said, you know, to choose where we can put our focus and put it into things that are feeding us. So beautifully, beautifully said. Thank you guys so much for all the education today and um, some really beautiful words to wrap up with. Thanks, Andrew. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks, Sam. Right.